Hi everyone, I um, just want to create a quick tutorial on how to integrate PPO with active pieces. Um, PPO is essentially a, a tool that allows you to translate or convert text into videos using it. So we're going to use um, active pieces to integrate with PPO. Um, we're going to create an active pieces flow. Uh, I'd like to kind of show you the uh, documentation real quick for this is how we're going to use to generate the, the video and retrieve the video. So what of which we're going to be using for this integration. So the first thing is to generate a single video. It tells you right here that this is the endpoint that we're going to be using. And also before I even do that, we're going to have to step back. Um, you need to authenticate with the third API using their, their authorization key. We were here that we need to provide in the headers. Then we can go ahead and generate those single those videos. So we need the actor ID, voice ID, language, script, which is going to be text that's going to be converted to to video frame per second, 30 or 60, the default 60, transparency, callback URL. As you can see here, this response of the ID. This is the thing that we need uh, for the second step, which is retrieving the video. So once we get the response back of the ID, we're going to go ahead and make another call to basically get the video for that particular one. So we're going to go to active pieces. Um, we're going to create a webhook. So we're going to start from the beginning here. Um, I'm going to change it. We go back here to core, go back to webhook, and this supply you with this URL. This URL is basically something that you can use to test out your webhook before you can publish. So we're going to go ahead and copy that and we're going to go to Postman, which in the document, which basically allows you to, to test out um, an API resource. In this case, we're going to do a post since we're sending in a body. This is going to be used in subsequent steps in the flow that we're going to be using. So we're going to paste that over here. This is basically the the URL that we copied from uh, the Active Pieces webhook trigger. And we're going to append the sync here because later in the future, we're going to want to respond back from this webhook. So we're sending the script and I'm going to put it here. Hello world. Here's a sample English script created by Pipio, blah, blah, blah. And then we're going to pass in the voice ID and actor ID as well. All right. We're going to go back to active pieces and do and send this. Actually, we're going to send this over here and then go back to the webhook. As you can see here, it generated a sample data based on what we were what was sent from Postman. So here's the body. Uh, here's a script. So we pass in the actor ID and voice ID, and we can use that to, to for the next step. So we're going to add these, a next step here, and we're going to go back to the core tab, uh, doing doing a an HTTP, and we're going to send a re HTTP request and a post. So remember that we the documentation here. Uh, if we want to generate a video, we're going to be doing a post on this URL. So we're going to copy that paste that URL over here, and then I'm going to go ahead and pass in the authorization, right? So we're gonna pass in the authorization right here and then the key, and then we're gonna do and include an API key as part of this request. So I'm gonna grab the key here real quick in place. All right, once we get the key over here, the header, authorization headers, uh, we're gonna have to make sure that there's a space in between here between the key, word key, and then your API key afterwards. And then we're gonna have to pass in the body. Go back to the documentation real quick. Uh, to generate a video, you need to pass in a body, which is like a JSON object, which is which we can obtain here. We're gonna so we're gonna copy that and put this right here in the body. Do this an actor ID, voice ID, and then we can just put any script that we want. Uh, so this basically, if you want like a static, we can make this static, or we can make this dynamic as part of the webhook trigger. So, so the reason why we if you go back to Postman here, I pass in the script, voice ID, and vo uh, actor is basically, these are the parameters, something that, that the webhook can basically take in, ingest, and and use it in the subsequent steps of the, the flow process here. So that's what, that's what we're going to be using. So the scripts, voice ID, and actor ID is going to be passed in. So if you go back here, if you remember, if you go back and we need to retest it, we, we were able to accept these three different things. So what we're going to do here is use that as part of this, this body request. So we're going to do remove everything this hard coded text from the example. And we're going to fill this in uh, from the first step 
which is over here. So we're going to go ahead and, and drill down and click on this arrow and click on the body and go down till we find what we wanted. So we want the actor ID first in the beginning. Just going to uh, insert this weird looking text here with some code, which essentially signifies the trigger and the, the body that's coming from that trigger and then the actor ID within that. So that's going to be part of that. Actor ID is going to be included and then the voice ID would be the next one. We're going to paste that in and the next one will be the script. So we're going to insert that as part of this request. So I think we have everything that we need set up here. Authorization. Actually, we need to add in the content type just to make sure application slash JSON, which was part of their documentation. If you you guys remember uh, your authentication, we're passing in the application slash JSON here on the top. And that's why we need to pass it in here as well. So just, just to make sure. All right, so we can go ahead and test this step. And this is actually going to send a request to the PPO uh, API, make a post request over there. So I'm going to do a test. And as you can see here, it's the test is successfully. And we were able to get an ID, which is something that this is the data that we want to get back. And it gives kind of gives you all the things that uh, sent as well. But we only care about the ID because that's what that's how we're going to retrieve the actual video on the next step. So we're going to go back here and create a new piece. We're going to go back to switch to core tab and we're going to select HTTP. And this time we're going to create a send HTTP with a get. Okay. Let's go back to the documentation to retrieve a video. I'm going to do a get request here and we're just going to copy this cell that we have here. And this is how we get the video. And this video right now is the video ID is something that we need to pass in to make this request. What we're going to do here is basically use the video ID that we received from the previous step from step number two when we create the video. So we're going to go ahead and drill down to that particular request, go to the body and you're going to see here the ID that is requested. So it's going to be requested as part of this uh, URL segment here. All right. All right. Before we can make any requests to this one, we're going to have to create add in the, the header that was, was used for the first request, which is the authorization and the content type. So we're going to use the reading to do the same thing. I'm going to pass in right here, station, and then the key on the top, and then the content type and station. Make sure we don't have any typo. You can even rename these, but we're not, we're not going to go do that in this video. So once you get that, once you create the next step, the second step will just be to test this one. So I'm going to go ahead and test it, make a request. Now this this uh, particular request on this uh, returns back a video URL as part of the body. So this is something that we're going to send back. So this is where the actual video actually lives. Just can go ahead and copy this. You can actually like paste this in your browser and you can download it right? and, and do whatever you need to do with that video. Uh, you can upload it or on a service such as an S3 or somewhere else in Google Drive. But we're going to create a new step here, which is to basically return something uh, when we call that webhook. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create another HTTP and this time it's going to be a return res a response. This one's just basically takes in an object. So we're going to put in the video URL here, uh, but you can, you know, basically at this point, you can name it however, shape the, the JSON payload however you want. Um, we're going to go here and insert uh, double codes. Inside that codes, we're going to go ahead and put in the body and the body is basically, it's going to contain, which is the video URL here. All right. And I think that's about it. So right now, when you create this request, it's not going to do anything yet because you haven't really published anything yet. So if you send a request here, it says for a poll, you're going to have to hit publish here right, in order for your webhook to work properly. So now when we create a request with all the different things, make a request, and now it's going to be a 200 request and it's going to contain the video uh, that we generated from this. Um, hope you like this video. Um, if you have some suggestions from for what tutorial you want me to do next, to comment and also hit subscribe. It's my first video, so take it easy on me. But see you then. Thank you.